This is the NECA Ultimate Action Figure of the Phantom. Released in January of 2022, it comes with 10 accessories. They include 4 sets of hands, 2 blast effects, 2 automatic pistols, a whip and a skull. The Ultimate Action Figure stands 18 cm tall from the bottom of his boots to the top of his purple cowled head. The Phantom was the first superhero to wear a skin-tight bodysuit, which has since become part and parcel with the superhero genre. Created by Lee Falk in 1936, the Phantom newspaper comic strip runs to this day. The Phantom's origin story, one of loss and revenge, is in keeping with other superheroes of pulp fiction and comic books. During the pirate scourge of the 16th century, the son of one of the sailors killed in such an attack swears an oath on the skull of his father's murderer to fight evil. The obsession has him take on the skull to represent the persona of the Phantom. Even his base in the fictional African country of Bangala is a cave which has its rocky entrance fashioned into a roaring skull. The skull emblem studs his belt buckle, whip, pistol handles and the ring on his right hand which leaves the unmistakable imprint on his vanquished foes, an ominous trademark left to let those that follow know that the phantom was there. Each phantom is inevitably killed in the line of duty, driving his son to then take on the mantle in revenge, and thus the obsession passes on through the generations, like a genetic disease over hundreds of years. The phantom in Lee Fox's creation was the 21st in the line, living a double life unmasked among civilized company as Kit Walker. But to the neighboring villagers he protects, and all his enemies who have killed him only to see him return time and again, he is the immortal phantom, who they refer to in dread as the ghost who walks. The phantom was perhaps the first superhero in my life. Growing up in the 80s and early 90s in India, DC and Marvel books were not yet available, or at least not that I was aware of as a child. I have vague memories of once having seen old Shazam and Superman cartoons. The only time I had seen their comic book avatars was at a cousin's house, whose father travelled abroad for work, and they had the John Byrne comics collected into bound volumes, identical to the omnibus volumes available now. India has long had its own comic book culture which was able to prosper thanks in part to that absence of these foreign titans, which became available to me at newsstands only by the late 90s. So the superheroes I grew up reading were The Phantom, Mandrake the Magician, Tarzan, Tintin, Asterix, Flash Gordon, mostly comics from the 30s and 40s, the same that my father grew up reading in his youth, and probably his father before him. And that continuity exists to this day with the Phantom, Tarzan, and these others still available in India in new editions. So when I got into collecting action figures, the first superheroes I went looking for were these, my superheroes. But soon I was to discover that their figures did not exist. I made plans to customize figures into them, and I had even prepared a list of ideal candidates for fodder. Unfortunately, I couldn't get to them when the prices of action figures began to soar, thanks to the global shipping and supply issues at the time, and the project slipped to the back of my mind, until NECA announced they were doing The Phantom. True, it was The Phantom from the Defenders of the Earth cartoon series, which I had never even heard of, but it was The Phantom nevertheless, and I pounced at my first chance to get one some months later, overpaying, because I was sure this would be my only chance of having one in my ideal scale. There was a smaller version in 1x18 scale, which stands less than 4 inches tall, released by Boss Fight Studios around the same time, but that scale is just too small for my taste. Thanks to the heavy import duty implemented in India in early 2020, action figures have since been twice their retail price at toy stores here, and in many cases even more. But I knew the Phantom would be worth it, until NECA announced in the November of that year that soon they would be releasing the comic accurate version of the Phantom as well and I felt properly had. It was my first real tiff in my blossoming relationship with NECA. You give me so much of what I want, and I'm buying them, so there's really no need to manipulate me, because all that achieves is the bitter taste it leaves every time I look at the figure, 
knowing that I overpaid. No, paid double. Twice to simply get this figure in hand and not in any rush delivery or premium packaging. Just to get the figure. The import duty we are charged here is beyond NECA's control. However, knowing how badly collectors desired a phantom figure and giving a Defenders of the Earth version first with no hint of what else was to come was playing dirty. You broke my heart. I rate my figures out of 10, dividing the 10 into 4 categories of 2.5 points each. The first category is likeness. And since this figure is basically an artist's impression of a comic book character that has been drawn by dozens of artists over the past 85 years, yes, 85 years, because this figure was released to celebrate the Phantom's 85th anniversary, there is no particular likeness to compare him with. True, there was a Phantom film with Billy Zane in the late 90s, which I've seen all of one time when it came out, and it was okay but it was certainly not good enough to supplant my conception of the character. And this figure is specifically from the original superheroes line of NECA's, Ultimate Figures, which I assume refers to the comic strip version of the character. The details of the cowl, the shape of his mask with the empty white of his eyes are all accurate to the comic strip. I would have preferred the head to be less bodybuilder chiseled, though with a spoonful more character heaped upon it. Actually, that's my only complaint about this figure. NECA obviously decided to go the cheap route by reusing a body they had used before for their Superman, Batman and Green Lantern figures and thought, hey, the Phantom, he's a superhero, so give him the superhero body. And you can see that they've used the same body with every figure, not only of this, the original superheroes line, but even with the previous year's Defenders of the Earth line. Now, the Phantom has always been shown as muscular and fit, but he is a human being. There's nothing superhuman about him. He uses two colts, he uses his fists, he uses his head. Not in that particular order. He also has his friends helping him, from a range of human characters to his loyal animal companions, Devil, the Mountain Wolf, and his horse, Hero. Outside of the jungle, when he has to play the part of Kit Walker, he's often depicted in a trench coat and hat with dark glasses. The man of this figure could not pass as an ordinary man, the extent of the buffness hampers the illusion for me, though with a little leap it does work. Again, the details are present. His belt, the double holsters, the automatic pistols, the rings, the suit, the whip, the mask, the skull. So I won't give it a low rating. By the way, I won't be showing the skull in my review because as with most of my figures, I got it second hand and it was still expensive and missing the skull. On that disappointing note, I'll give the Phantom a score of 1.5 out of 2.5 for likeness. The next category is detail, i.e. 1.25 for sculpt detail and 1.25 for paint detail. As incredible as the muscle definition is, though NECA made it a point to include the detail of his suit cuffs, it does not feel like a suit on a body. The rest of the details are beautiful. I've already mentioned them. The rings on either hand are accurate, the mask. Even the skulls carved onto the handles of his pistols and on top of his handle for his whip. On the other hand, the two identical blast effects included are not the most inspiring. Since his entire body is covered by a featureless suit besides his striped trunks, there really isn't much to write home about and by that same token, not much else to complain about either and give it a 0.75 out of 1.25 for sculpt detail. I have to admit, the paintwork on this figure is not as crisp or clean as I'm used to from my numerous other NECA figures in my collection. I have more figures by NECA than by any other single action figure company. So it pains me that I chose this figure as the first video I'd make from their line. Why did I choose the Phantom for that honor? I think I thought this would go a whole lot better. It's funny how faults pop up when you go looking for them, because I had been fine with this figure until I settled down to making this review. Considering the majority of the figure is a single shade, let's start there. The purple is noticeably different from the shade used on the Defenders of the Earth Phantom, which I am glad for, because this shade does suit him better, pun intended. Though I might have gone for a darker shade still, and may repaint the figure at some point if it bugs me too much. 
There is a reason this category is called paint detail, and it's because I look at how the details are rendered. There aren't many with this figure, but they are where this figure stumbles. More than the design, it is the actual work in the factory that is at fault. The edges of the purple of a scowl that frames his face is shoddy, showing the skin color of the plastic beneath. The same goes for the black of his mask. And on either hand, it is a seam with a silver paint that does not properly cover his rings. Besides those misses, the whip handle is well done with the skull carving, leather-bound handle, and the metal base with strap having their separate tones with a modicum of weathering. The skulls on his holsters and pistols are highlighted with a dash of silver that works beautifully, but I do wish they had done some weathering on the holsters and the pistol. The blue and black stripes of his trunks are sharp and well done, complemented by the metallic blue on the triangle belt buckle with the wonderful iconic white skull embossed in its center. It is a reminder of Mecca at its best, which makes one all the more pensive for what could have been if that same love and attention had been spread to the other facets of this piece. I'll give it a rating of 0.75 out of 1.25 for paint detail. The third category is pose slash articulation, i.e. pose if it's a statue and articulation if it's an action figure which will allow it to take the best poses. With the double jointed elbows and knees, the bicep swivels and toe articulation, this figure is a joy to pose. Using the whip and or the pistols is a dream. And I've put him in this pose to showcase the possibilities because the majority of my figures cannot achieve this. And with this figure, it was effortless. The McFarlane multiverse figures boast having 22 points of articulation. And I do appreciate them making the effort but you will be hard pressed to get many of them into as lively a pose without exposing their shortcomings. However, this figure is not perfect when it comes to articulation. I'm not a fan of this sort of ab crunch and either there is no twist at the waist or the joint on my particular figure is stuck. The design of the neck and the joint also makes it awkward to have the head turn in certain directions. The horizontal turn of the wrists rather than either giving vertical options as well or making them just vertical turns presents problems posing with the pistols and the whip, which makes the decision to have them horizontal all the more baffling. Weighing the good against the bad, I'll give it a rating of 1.75 out of 2.5 for articulation. The final category is representation. That is, how special the figure is in terms of representing this character. Here I take into account other representations of the character in the original medium, be it in a film or TV series or comic book, and whether I feel this was not a based of an opportunity. That is the main point of this category, and yes, it is completely subjective. The rating for this is entirely based on the present situation. I wouldn't put it past NECA to announce another version of the Phantom in the coming months, this time with his throne from Skull Cave along with Devil. They may even do color variants of him, just as Boss Fight Studios has done with their 1x18 scale Phantom. They may even do a version of him not as bulky, with the head sculpt more in tune with that era, and do him justice, but until then, being that I've repainted the other Defenders of the Earth Phantom to make a custom for another character, they've ticked all the major boxes for me here, and this Phantom figure will work as my only representation of him. It is nowhere near ideal, but it'll do as a work in progress until Devil and his throne comes to join him, and soon maybe even Kit Walker in the trench coat and hat. And would it be unrealistic to hope for a Diana Walker? NECA is hard to predict, so I'll keep my fingers crossed. For all that it's missing, but that is still included, I'll rate this figure a medium, 1.5 out of 2.5 for representation. So, adding them up totals the score for NECA's ultimate figure of the original superheroes, the Phantom, to 6 out of 10. The rating is lower than I expected when I began this video, but I think it is right because standing him beside the other figures from the Defenders of the Earth line and the original superheroes line, he looks merely like a variation of the same body, whereas a character as important to the history of comics and pulp fiction as the Phantom is deserves at least the same love and attention, the same company that made it, Neca, 
has given many of its other lines, including the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. There have been many superheroes since his first appearance in black and white, but just as the mantle of the Phantom is passed on from one generation to the next, so has the character been passed on from one generation of readers to the next, over 85 years, and on it will go. After all, he is the ghost who walks.